PWCC is a great way to sell your sports cards. If you're looking for a way to support the Cajun Cardboard YouTube channel, consider using the promo code CAJUN, all caps, C-A-J-U-N, when you're selling your cards on the PWCC marketplace. Hey guys, Ryan with KJ Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. And today's uh, episode is going to be about the offseason trades. We're going to do, uh, I got Coach Pixley with me. We're going to go through a lightning round, start to finish. We're going to work in reverse chronological order. We're going to go all the way back to, let me make sure I got this right, Jonathan. Uh, we're going to start with the most recent. Actually, I don't want to start with the most recent. I want to start with... Um, okay. I want to go back to June 23rd. We're going to start with the first offseason. This is just NBA offseason trades. We're going to talk through each one. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, you know, is it irrelevant? Is it relevant on a scale of 1 to 10? You know, where does it move them? How does it affect title odds and title uh, likelihood and things like that? And we'll just kind of work our way through. But these are going to be quick. Okay, these yep. are going to be really quick. Yep. Uh, we're shooting for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And we're going to start with... The June 23rd, Chris Tapps Porzingis trade, and I've got it pulled up on the screen. I've got screen share up. Here we go. The Celtics get Porzingis, Marcus Sasser, who was a pick, for, uh, you know, that got traded to Detroit. Uh, a 2024 first round pick from Golden State via Memphis. The Grizzlies got Marcus Smart. Okay, so that's the second big piece. Obviously, KP is one. The Grizzlies get Smart. The Wizards get Tyus Jones, Gallinari, Muscala, and Julian Phillips. Uh, I think we primarily need to focus here on Gallinari's done. Agree? Yeah, for sure. M Muscala is not no longer really relevant, not a rotation player. Marcus Sasser might be good, but we don't know enough. Julian Phillips, hey, we don't know. Let me cut you off about Sasser just because I was in the gym with him in Chicago. Uh, oh, tell he, me. We, before It was actually before last college season because he was thinking about entering the draft. Yeah. Um, great kid, man. Works his behind off, and I'm, I'm really pulling for him. I, I'm not – it's you know there i hope he's not a dime it doesn't i really don't think he is because the kid's just a freaking winner but yeah. i'm in a guard heavy league like that i i'm just pulling for him i just want to throw that out there because he's a he's a a lot of these you know a lot of our viewers who would look at this that they, they may never know who marcus sasser is but um yeah I, I enjoyed the time with him for sure uh who won this trade Celtics. Who's better, Marcus Smart or Tyus Jones? Depends on what you need. Yeah, it does depend on what you need. Uh, it sounds like Marcus Smart's going to play point guard for the Grizzlies for at least 25 games till Ja gets back. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, used to be a great defender. I'm not sure he's as great as people think he is now. Um, obviously, he's an upgrade defensively over Tyus Jones. Uh, but Tyus Jones was kind of a off-the-bench guy, and he would play point when John ja Morant was hurt. I, I think Tyus Jones, uh, it's funny because I've got three guys for most improved player this year. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Uh, I've got uh, Jordan Poole, who I think could push 28 points a game just because the, the green light is the greenest of the green. Yeah. Um, I've got Tyus Jones because he's finally uh, unleashed to have huge minutes. Yep. He's in his prime. Uh, he's got one of the best assist turnover ratios in the entire NBA. And I think he's a guy that could get into the 19 and 10, 19 and 11, maybe 20 and 11. It, it's tough for him to score, especially with Kuzma and Poole taking all those shots. He's going to be um, top five in assists, dude. He'll be top he'll five. He'll be top five in assists, and he'll do it incredibly efficiently. So he's in my mix. And then Tyrese Maxey's in my mix, obviously, because I think if Harden leaves a the void there, Tyrese is going to go ape shit. Yep. Um, you think that Porzingis certainly makes the Celtics better. I agree with you. This was the first domino to fall for the Celtics. Yeah. I, I think – here's the deal, and everybody's going to say, well, you know, he's only played 65 games or, or more, I think, twice in his career. Okay. Well, that's fine. But at the end of the day, what's the point of all of this? The point is to try to win a championship, okay? yep. in, in our opinion, right? For so, them, for sure. That's all the Celtics care about is what gives us the best chance to win the title. Yeah. So, So who gives you – uh, you know, what what moves did teams make to get them closer to that? And I think Porzingis does that. Now, I will readily admit this. I don't pay as much attention to his year last year in Washington as others do because it's empty stats, okay? Yep. But I do pay attention to his skill set fit with the Celtics and his ability to protect the rim if healthy. Agreed. Okay. Jonathan, 
Are you looking at these numbers, dude? Last year, I know you, you want to downplay them because you don't like empty stats and stat stuffers on shitty teams. But even if you take a knock at it, look at the efficiency, Jonathan. 23.8.4 rebounds, 23 points, 8.4 rebounds, fit almost 50. He's almost 50, 40, 80. Okay. But I want to say this, and I think you'll agree with this. When you know that you're the guy, now granted, he had Beal and Kuzma on his team too. I get it. Okay. But when you know basically, A, there's no pressure to win. B, you're the guy, okay? You're going to shoot it with more confidence than you do because you're getting more reps in a, in a shorter amount of time too, right? You're going to get more attempts. I'm going to be interested to see if his percentages stay close to that when he goes 10 possessions without touching the ball. It cuts both ways. Uh, the more attempts you get, the better feel for the game you get, and then sometimes that can increase your percentages. But the fewer attempts you get – and being the what, Jonathan, fourth option on offense? Maybe, uh, maybe or maybe fifth. Dude, Derek maybe. White and Drew Holiday are there. We're gonna get to that. Maybe Derek be the fourth. Not enough, he's gonna get okay, but he's gonna get fewer field goal attempts, uh, but he's gonna get a lot cleaner looks. I mean, he's yeah, gonna I get agree. so many open threes on pick and pops. He is um, an elite shooter now, dude. He has become an elite shooter for sure. Did that trade right there put them ahead of the Bucks? Uh, not that one, but the one that has recently well, happened. Here. Just tell me right now, did this trade on June 23rd put them at number one in the East? As far as yeah. right there on June 23rd, did you say they just added Porzingis? Now Porzingis is starting. Horford's coming off the bench or maybe starting at the four. They still had Robert Williams at the time. Did you think the Celtics are the best team in the East at this trade? I did. You know, the more I think about it, yeah, you're probably right. I, yeah. I would have had to say so. I did. Do you yeah. think Marcus Smart uh, to the Grizzlies matters as far as pushing them closer to, like, title contention? I don't think so either. We're not going to talk any more about that. And then Tyus Jones, I just think, is a, he is a starting point guard in the NBA. I'm glad he finally gets a shot. We got to coach against him in the EYBL when he was the National Player of the Year, I believe, and, and yeah. basically the number one ranked player in the country. Yeah. Um, next big trade, and it's big. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, the Suns get Beal. Okay, so that's the headliner. Uh, the Wizards <laughs> get Chris Paul, who we know was later uh, flipped over to Golden State. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Shamit and Koulibaly or Jordan Goodwin or Isaiah Todd. So Beal, Paul, and, oh, my God, a lot of uh, picks that the Wizards get, which they needed because they are clearly in a rebuild and a figuring out who is our new foundation post Beal, right? Tyus yeah. Jones, Kuzma, Poole. Uh, you know, yep. we'll see what happens over there. Uh, the Pacers get Jarris Walker, who I, I, I kind of like Jarris Walker. Have you seen a little bit of him? A little uh, bit. We'll see. I don't know. It's hard to bank on anything. And then the Pacers get two seconds. So the big deal here is Beal. Does Beal, at this point, on June 24th, does that put the Suns in the driver's seat in the West, in your opinion, ahead of the Nuggets, ahead of the Lakers, ahead no. of the Warriors? No, with what they lost, I think it um, – now, granted, they have since gained some of that back. Um, I think that it it does make them it does put them in a position where they could go to the finals. I don't think they're decidedly ahead of those teams, though. I don't. I think, um, and I also everybody keeps talking about fit, and I keep hearing that they're going to play Bradley Beal as the one. Has have we ever known him to play the point? Yeah, he, he played a one when uh, he, he actually had an amazing season when he had to take over for John Wall. One of those eleven seasons where John Wall was hurt. Uh, so he, he did have some success at that. I think they're just going to take turns bringing the ball up and initiating offense him and Booker. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, unless a deal's done for a point guard. Cause I don't, I don't, as far as I know, they don't have another true legitimate rotational point guard on the team. Unless I no. missed something. I mean, Cameron no. Payne's gone. Uh, he was a backup point, but he's on the box now. We'll talk about that in a second. So you don't think that that Beal move put them over the top. Keep it in mind at that time, they had Booker, Durant, Beal, and DeAndre Ayton. Is that the yeah, best no. big four? Is that the best big four in basketball? It, it was. Yeah. Was. Yeah. And and I think um I don't know. I, I also play I put a lot into continuity and what the Nuggets have from a continuity standpoint. Um yes. but this team, look, at least you're dealing with three ultra pros, right? Beal, Booker, Durant, right? Dudes who are okay giving it up and and competing and being a selfish and all that. So it could, man. I I'm gonna be interested to see. I, I am. I'm just glad that Bradley Beal's gonna get to play like meaningful basketball again. You know, all the and, things that we said about Porzingis and his numbers apply to Beal because now you went from clearly the only option really in Washington. Kuzma had a good season, but the only option in Washington to 
certainly I would think no better than the third option in uh, in Phoenix. But uh, okay. his percentages should go up. He should get a lot of clean looks. Monty Morris for a second round pick. The Pistons got Monty Morris. Doesn't matter because the Pistons can't contend right now. We're only looking at teams that can move forward. By the way, we skipped over this real quick. Chris Paul ends up getting flipped to the Warriors. Let's just get that over with right now. What's the starting lineup for the Warriors? Is he in it? Man. If he's in it, that means you start Wiggins at the four. Which, can you get away with in today's league? Yes, probably. Um, can The question is... Now Dray- well, Draymond's out. out, right? No, he's he's a starter. He's the center. No, no, he's out four to six weeks with an ankle. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so during this first phase, yes, I think you do plug Chris Paul in there and you just play tiny. Um, but Kevon Looney is, is you know, a good positional defensive center, but, again, not a rim protector. I just worry they're going to get the living crap beat out of them at the rim. I've always worried that. Um, some years they've shot their way past it and they've just outscored people. But, like, I'm looking at this roster. Let me know when you get to somebody that can defend the rim. Curry, Thompson, Wiggins, Draymond Green, Kavon Looney, Chris Paul, Kaminga, Peyton, Moody, Saric, Corey Joseph. Hopefully this rookie, Trace Jackson Davis, who's a center, who might get some run, although I don't see a rookie stepping in and breaking into that rotation in Golden State. Jonathan, they're going to have – they're going to do something. They're going to have to do something because Draymond's a, like 6'6", six, six, uh, yep. no matter what the stat sheet says. Yep. you got Kavon Looney. you got now Wiggins, Steph, and Clay, and they've got Chris Paul on uh, – this is Basketball Monster, by the way, which is a great website if you play fantasy sports. They're mm-hmm. very on point, and they update very regularly. Um, they got Chris Paul coming off the bench and kind of running that second unit and maybe finishing games just depending on how small they really want to go. But we're yep. talking like really small. If it's Paul, Curry – Clay, who can't guard anybody, and then Wiggins, who can't guard fours. Well, the problem is also – Who's going like, to get a rebound? You've tried to – correct. You've tried to hide Steph defensively, although he's gotten better. No no question, okay? You've tried to hide him for years now. Um, and you can still do that with certain guys. Like, you bring, you know, Gary Payton off the bench and whatnot. But, like, with Chris Paul is certainly not who Chris Paul was defensively anymore, okay? Oh, he's a bad and, defender now. Yeah, and Clay Thompson is not who Clay Thompson was defensively. So he's a bad defender as well, I think. Maybe average at best. Average at best. You're correct. Okay, for sure. So I think you're going to struggle now. They'll look at it and go, okay, well, we can play a little faster, maybe, or you know, Steph can play off the ball even more. Well, Steph was playing off the ball a ton anyhow because Draymond yeah. was initiating a lot of that stuff. So um, I don't see the move moving the needle a ton. I just I don't, don't have them in my top three in the West. Lakers, Suns, yeah, Nuggets. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with and you. And then there's other teams that I could, you could make an argument might be the fit to me. The Chris Paul fit. I mean, I know it's great to get a high IQ guy and to take some of the pressure off on the ball hand. If I'm just thinking about the playoffs. Games. If you said uh-huh. 75 games, then their seating. If he if he's gonna play that much, okay. Yeah. Then their seating probably be better, but still in the playoffs, it's a it's a janky. It's janky. Line. Yeah. Janky is the right word. Yeah. Uh, Joe Harris to the Pistons, no need to discuss. Victor Oladipo on July 6th in a couple of picks, no need, need to discuss. I don't even know how Victor Oladipo gets in the rotation. If there's one place that a guard doesn't want to go if they want to play minutes, it's OKC because, oh, my God, Jalen Williams, Giddy, SGA, they are on a steep – incline as far as progression and learning curve um so that is a place that you do not want to go if you plan to play minutes in the nba uh mavs get rashawn holmes that's not the answer at center rashawn holmes three years ago would have been a huge pickup rashawn holmes now i'm not so sure and again he's just a dwight powell i mean he's just a guy right he's just a rim runner a screen setter a rebounder a get out and transition guy i just don't think he moves the needle a lot of people are high on this Olivier Maxence Prosper. Have you seen him at all? I haven't I seen haven't him. Seen Rashawn yeah. Holmes, I feel like the Mavs have like six guys at that level every year. Every – and they're – they. when's the last time they've had a good big? His name's Chris Tapps Porzingis, and it just didn't work out. I mean, I yeah. think he and Doncic didn't get it. Uh, Patty Mills, too old to matter, and going to the Rockets makes no I'm sense. So unless he's just trying to keep people out of now, trouble. Man. I'm so yeah. sorry for that guy. Yeah, you know, I know you. I know how you feel about the Rockets. What do you think about Max Struess to the Cavs? Does that move the needle? Does, does it, is that a is that a net win for the Cavs? Max Struess picking up Max Struess 
instead of Jetty Osmond? Is Max Struess better than Jetty Osmond? Yes, he is for for them. And but the question is, and, and I think what's funny is talking to Max Struess's agent. Okay, who's the same agent for uh, our guy? Okay, um, it's funny because he really hadn't shot it well. He didn't I shoot know. well last year. Okay, and it it's, good though. He was like 35, 36% the year before, something like that. So the the thing that's kept him on the floor, that kept him on the floor in Miami was his activity level and his toughness. And he could make an open shot, right? But he had to take tough shots at times um, because you didn't have a lot of spacing on that team. I think he'll have some spacing. So if he's going to shoot a higher – if he's going to get in the 40s, this would be a team to do it with. So, yeah. I think, yeah, he's – Certainly not going to be one of the top three options. He, he can attack closeouts a little bit. He can yeah. attack closeouts a little bit. Better, I think he's a better shooter than Osmond. I don't know what the percentages say, but I would choose him as a shooter over Osmond. Although Osmond has surprised me. I thought he was the worst player in the world, and he ended up being an okay pro. Yeah. Uh, Chris Duarte never really truly clicked uh, in Indiana. Just, you know, I think they all, he was an older rookie, if I recall. Everybody thought yeah. he was going to be the next great shooting guard in Indiana. It just didn't really work out. Now they got Matherin. Um, so Duarte goes to the Kings to be, I'm assuming, a bench scorer guy. He's not a starter, obviously. If we go look at the NBA depth charts and we go down here to Sacramento, um, yeah, D- Duarte's not going to sneak in the starting lineup when you've got Fox, Herter, and Murray. Um, they've got Duarte down here with about an 18% usage rate. So uh, he's probably going to be – him and Malik Monk are going to be two, two bucket getters off the bench, right? Uh, Davion Mitchell's there. I don't think he cracks the rotation. Oh, you I don't, don't think, think he gets in the rotation at all? No, he, he's not going to play ahead of Davion, Davion Mitchell. He's not going to play ahead of Monk. Uh, I mean, I just don't see. I mean, if there's a yeah, you're right. right there. I don't see it. Trey Lyles is a good, solid pro. They've got Trey Lyles listed as a center. I'm pretty sure that's not correct. I do um, not agree with that. That is not. He is not, <laughs> he is not a center. Uh, the Chris Paul traded to the Warriors. We already talked about that. The Wizards get uh, PBJ, Jordan Poole, Ryan Rollins. Not Ryan Hollins. Ryan Rollins. Uh, Jordan Poole, uh, is Jordan Poole, is Jordan Poole a, um, career 20 point scorer who never does anything else? Or does he take another step with the freedom he's about to get and, and sneak into all-star conversations? Oh, I think he can make an all-star team. I do because he's going to put up huge numbers. Uh, they got to be really huge to make it on a team that's going to win 12 games this year. I think um, at the end of the day, though, he is exactly what you said. But from a winning standpoint, I don't think he's ever going to be a guy. I think he'll average a bunch of points for his career, but he's never going to be a guy who is even one of the primary reasons why you win. And I know they tried to make him sound like that two years ago in Golden State. Obviously, that was not the case because they couldn't play in the finals. Everybody was pushing Steph Curry 2.0, and then he just had he had an amazing season. I think it was two years ago, and then just regressed drastically percentage wise as well. So I don't know, yeah. I I don't know what to think about Jordan Poole. I I do think it's possible, and I know there's some gunslingers out there. It is possible he leads the league in three pointers attempted this year. If it's there's a bet, TV, dude. it's must see TV. If there's a bet, well, it's not must see TV, but it's must look at box score. Uh, if, if he, I'm not watching. The gotta watch. uh, watch. We're going to do our top 30 league pass teams. And I'm telling yeah. you right now, uh, I'd like Tyus Jones. I want to see him succeed, but like the wizards are going to be very low on the list. I'm oh, trying yeah. to think of somebody lower. Uh, Collins, uh, John Collins to the jazz just never, you know, I mean, good, not great. Uh, you know, good at everything. Master of nothing. I don't know. Whatever you want to call John Collins. What, what position is he? Is he a four? Is he a five? Um, can he shoot How the three? Can he not shoot the three? How old is Rudy Gay? How old is he? I, I couldn't believe that. I, I couldn't believe it. I feel like I was watching him when I was in law school in the 90s. Um, does John Collins to the Jazz matter? Um, can he start in Utah? I don't think he, he can start, start in Utah. Up last year. Yeah, he's going to start. They got Markinen back to the three. Why would you screw around with that? Just leave Markinen exactly where he was last year. Um it's not God, a bad I hate lineup, that. Though, man. That's a pretty good lineup. It's not a bad lineup, Jonathan. And uh, I like the Agbaji kid. I really like him out of Kansas. I really like him. Uh, Chris Dunn's a great defense, a really, really good defensive point guard for that second so unit. And then uh, so Kelly Olenek's a great pro. 
Dunn is so bad offensively, and I had such high hopes for him coming out. I did too, dude. He just cannot shoot. I don't like the Sexton Clarkson mix. I think they're the same. They're the same. You could call him Colin Clarkson and Jordan Sexton. It's the same thing. (laughs) Um, All right. So John Collins doesn't move the needle. Utah, you know, uh, again, they're probably going to be a play in team. They overachieved. uh, Well, they way overachieved last year from what we were expecting. Damian Jones is still playing. Scotlandville Magnet, Baton Rouge products. Amazing. Um, Kenya Martin, Josh Christopher, not worth talking about any of that. And Patty Mills on the move again to the Thunder. Um, oh, I didn't realize that. Good. I'm glad. He'll never play, but that's good. Yeah, at least he got out of Houston. He'd rather not play in uh, OKC than not play in Houston. Uh, right. Dylan Brooks uh, to the Rockets in that Patty Mills swap Thank for all you. the picks and all that crazy shit. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. I love it. One more reason not to watch the Rockets. But I, here's the deal, dude. His mouth is going to be running so much worse than ever after the performance he had in the World Cup. He was absolutely freaking awesome uh, and shockingly efficient, like astonishingly efficient. Mark it down. You heard it here first. Some some type of major violation within the team from a fighting standpoint or from some is going to happen in Houston this year because that guy thinks he's a winner. And he thinks he's the reason why teams win. And when they don't win, he's going to pop off one too many times to the wrong dude of who there are like five of on that team. And it's going to be a problem. (laughs) He thinks he's James Harden 2.0 after the OKC to Houston move where, okay, finally, now you get to see my full offensive arsenal. I can't wait to watch him take 29% from three. Memphis to Houston move. No, I'm talking about James Harden. Oh, Back in the day, when James, remember when James Harden were like, oh, James Harden's a nice player. He's a six man for the Thunder. And then he got to Houston, and you're like, holy shit, this guy's yeah. one of the greatest offensive players That's I've right. ever seen. That's I think right. Dylan Brooks thinks he just stepped into this huge green light where he's going to lead the team in scoring. And I honestly believe he may think that. If yeah. you ask Dylan Brooks, who's the alpha on this team, he might say me. Yeah, he, he probably will. Didn't Kevin Porter just get arrested? For no, he broke a girl's neck. That's all. Okay, he'll get arrested um, right. again. He'll get arrested again. This one's a career killer. Yeah, he's done. Uh, see, he broke her neck. He literally broke her neck. Did he really? Is that? Oh he my broke God. her vertebrae. He broke her neck, dude. Yes. Oh, God. Um, Suns trade, nothing, nothing. Oh, my God. Now, Patty Mills is on the Hawks now, by the way, two weeks later. <laughs> Rudy Gay got traded again, by the way. Uh, Grant Williams to the Mavericks. Move the needle. Are the Mavericks a a top six playoff team, a playoff lock, or are they in the play-in, or are they potentially not in the playoffs at all? I think they're closer to not in the playoffs than being top six. Agreed, 100%. Grant Williams, uh, great for chemistry, great for toughness, which they have none of. Um, It's sort of a replacement for the Dorian Finney-Smith, who was just a hard-nosed, badass, versatile defender. He's not not a perimeter defender uh, like – uh, Dorian Finney-Smith is, but he is a very good uh, post-position defender, not challenging anybody at the rim or whatever. Uh, every team needs a tough guy, and he's the tough guy. I mean, he's kind of like a Mahorn that shoots the occasional three is the way I kind of look at Grant Williams. Um, I'm going to tell you this, though, right now, and I believe Grant Williams is going to realize that life was pretty good in Boston. No and shit. He's going to realize that, okay, yeah, I was the dirty work guy, but you're a dirty work guy guy on a team where whose two best players will defend okay that is certainly not the case in Dallas so, he's gonna struggle with the whole situation in Dallas because that is a uh yeah def- defending is optional uh picks Cameron Payne to the Spurs but we know he's now a buck uh the big one right the big yeah. one well the first big one yeah. Here we go. We're getting up to the present time. This uh, occurred on September 27th. It's now October 24th. We're filming this. So a little over a week ago, yeah. the Bucks got Lillard. All right. That right there, I thought that the Celtics were ahead of the Bucks after the Porzingis trade, despite yeah. the fact that they lost Grant Williams. I thought that the Lillard acquisition moved the Bucks back ahead of the Celtics, if only by a small margin, okay. uh, because it is a humongous drop off in defensive uh you know acumen holiday we know he's great but i didn't realize how bad a defender damian lillard was right. like i think i saw somewhere he was the 245th <laughs> ranked defensive player in the nba or something like that i guess we can look closer at that or people at home can do their own homework uh so let's talk about that first 
is that a perfect fit with Giannis or is it close to perfect? Or do you, do you have issues with that? Do you think there's going to be an alpha issue? No, offensively, I don't either. offensively it's a perfect fit because it makes Giannis be what he should be, which is a screener, right? Screener and rim roller. Right. Um, I think also it, it, it allows him to catch the ball in spots where he can now be effective from, as opposed to starting with the ball and having to get to that spot on his own. Yeah. Um, it spaces the floor, obviously, tremendously. Uh, it gives you a true closer who Middleton, when healthy, was a closer, but not at the level of Damian Lillard, and we know that. Um, defensively, I'm, I'm a, I will say this. I'm interested to see if Lillard, and he has played for teams, a couple teams that, you know, had a chance to make playoff runs at times, but if he really thinks he's in a, in a position to win a title, Will he be even serviceable defensively now? I, I don't know if he can be. I, I just am interested. To see will that. Will he hold himself accountable from the defensive yeah. standpoint at his age, which is what thirty three? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think he's going to buy in and do his best. He's still a little person, and he's still thirty three. Um, yeah. He's not a big guy, um, and he's never been a good defender. Um, but he is a winner, and I uh, and I think that. You know, having Brooke and Giannis on the floor, and I think there's there is a huge drop off coming for Brooke Lopez at some point. I don't know if this is it. That's I pray true. it's not. I pray we get one more good year out of him where he's elite defensively. We know that there is a point coming where he, there is a huge drop off for a gigantic person in sure. the mid thirties. It just happens, especially as especially considering you know how switchy you have to be now in the league. You know, uh, in order to succeed. Well, so, they play him in that drop coverage, and he's. He can get out and cont- he's interesting in his timing is just impeccable for a gigantic mountain of a man. He just really is. smart. Really, uh, smart. who do you start at that at that two guard position, Beasley or Connaughton? Uh, they'll start Connaughton. Uh, I think they'll I think- start Connaughton as well, strictly to cover Lillard's ass defensively. And right. to be honest with you, Middleton's a bad defender now. Well, I mean, what I saw in the playoffs was right. he was a on orange cone, like he was abused right. and hunted. It's just going to um, come down to can Connaughton be as good of a shooter as, and I mean Grayson Allen hasn't ever been a great shooter, but he's been good enough, right? Um, can he be at least that good? What uh, is that two guards' role on that team? Make open shots and defend. Period. That's yeah, it. Period. And and that's why I think Connaughton's the guy uh, yeah. because while Beasley is more prolific as a three point shooter and certainly is more comfortable taking volume. I think Connaughton's a better defender and a bigger, much bigger defender. Pretty athletic, um, too, man. He's really athletic. I'll tell you, and I'll say this again. I don't know why, again, they have him listed as a point guard when Marjan Beauchamp is not a point guard. Right. Uh, he, to me, he is the key to this team. I, I really think people need to keep their eye on Marjan Beauchamp, or Beauchamp, I'm sure is how you pronounce it, but I refuse to speak French on this channel. Uh, I really, really, really hope he takes a huge step forward. He had an incredible summer. Go Google it. Um, he is going to be the. We know what we're getting with Lillard. We know you know Beasley and Connaughton are whatever. They're good, slightly average, maybe slightly better than average rotation players and three point shooters. Middleton is obviously a huge question mark. He needs to be healthy. If we get a healthy Middleton, you know what you have there. Uh, and then Giannis and Brook, you know what you got, barring some drop off by Lopez. Marjan Beauchamp is the one. Th- same thing with Portis. I don't even know if Crowder still has anything in the tank. I, no. I don't. I don't know if he does. I don't think he was all that great the last time I saw him healthy and playing. Uh, and they didn't even play him in the playoffs, did they? No. And he's PJ Tucker. I mean, it, it's got to be over at some point. Now, look for our viewers. Is. Okay. Um, let me translate to the rest of you what our our unbelievable host really meant by the Marshawn Beauchamp being the key. Okay. What he is saying, because he gets a little excited at times, okay, what he's saying is he is a sneaky, underrated, could be important dude to the team. Because what he it really would to say was my unquestionably, Chris Middleton is the key to the season. Okay? Yeah, it um, is. But this kid could matter. He really could. There's no question about that. So, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm well, he's going to play two – Three, probably three positions. He's going to yeah. get minutes at the two, three, and on undersized four. Yeah. I really think he's going to be part of this team. Uh, Monsters got him on here. He's playing 21 minutes a game. If he pays 21 minutes a game, I think you're going to see a huge step forward. And uh, and it, it's not like the Bucks have a lot of other young guys on the up. Although I do really like Ty Ty Washington. I really liked him at I Kentucky. 
I hated that he went to Houston because he was in that log jam with all the other young, you know, guards. And now Houston's even more of a log jam, although Kevin Port Jr. is out of the picture. Yeah. I like Ty Ty Washington. I wouldn't be surprised if some point during the season, Ty Ty pushes Cameron Payne for that backup point guard role. I'm telling you, Ty Ty Washington, I really, really liked him uh, coming out of Kentucky. Um, do you think there's a chance this is the year that uh, Ana DeCumpo makes an all-star team? Thanasis. Thanasis, Ana DeCumpo. It, it. Um, in the G League. Has anybody ever made an all-star team averaging three, two, and one? Um, or one, two, and three, in, more likely? Not in basketball. I don't not in basketball. All right, let's keep, let's keep going. Okay, what do you think about Aiton and Nurkic? How big of a drop-off is it from Aiton to Nurkic? Just depends on if Nurkic decides he wants to play basketball. Perfect Nurkic. Nurkic never has an issue with wanting to play basketball. Oh, that's not true. His motor has been awful the last couple of years. Awful. No, I don't think so. I just don't think he likes to play defense. I think his motor on offense is he likes to eat on offense, dude. Yeah, but he, you're right. He never touched the ball. I, if, if he's willing to be a dirty work guy, I don't. the drop-off is is still enough, but I don't think it's as big as people think. I think it, I'm going to be interested to see. I, I have never been a DeAndre Ayton fan. I think he's soft, period, okay? And, I, and I'm not talking about mentally like dealing with Monty Williams yelling at him. I'm talking about physically. Soft. Yeah, he doesn't dunk a basketball. He does not like to dunk the basketball, but he was 18 and 10 and shot 60% from the field and, all, you know, 76% from the line. Yeah. Those are legitimate numbers. Nurkic no didn't problem. do that. No question. And Nurkic doesn't do that. Yeah. And he's got a better mid-range jumper than Nurkic. Nurkic will step out and shoot some threes, unfortunately. Uh, sure. Not on the Suns, he won't. Yeah. I think it's a pretty freaking big drop-off. I think that the Suns didn't realize what they had, and I'm assuming this had more to do with – discontent and you know yeah. personality mm-hmm. conflicts and maybe yeah. unresolved you know conflicts that they just couldn't figure out and where they're like we got to get him out the door at least we can bring in some depth with grace and allen and uh remind me who else they picked up besides grace and allen um oh um uh nasir little who i really like i like yeah. nasir little the He's real powder, real man. versatile Aiden, wing Aiden's a powder uh from what we hear right and for sure we don't know but if for you're sure. pouting no matter yeah, look, if Nurkic comes in, doesn't pout, does his job, he's a better fit than Aiton. Who Fair pouts. enough. Here Fair enough. Goes. We'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, obviously, the Bucks sent Drew Holiday to the Blazers in that, and then everybody knew within the next five days Holiday was going to get traded. Yes. And, of course, that leads us to the last big trade. There's uh, really the last one we're going to talk about, and that's – uh, Drew Holiday to the Celtics. We'll just start there. We don't need to talk about the Trailblazers because they're in rebuild. Yes. And uh, it sounds like Brogdon, who they got in return, sounds like they're going to keep Robert Williams and Aiton. So yeah. maybe they could play two, you know, bigs. I don't know. It's weird. Nobody's doing that anymore. But maybe. I mean, the Cavs did it for, with success. Then again, they're not trying to win games. They're trying to develop Shadon Sharp, Anthony Simons, and Scoot Henderson. Right. Um, but the Celtics got Drew Holiday. And so in my opinion, this has been a ping pong, a game. Uh, the the Bucks, uh, well, the Celtics took the first swing, and when they added Porzingis, I felt that incrementally made them better than the Bucks. And again, we're just ignoring the Miami Heat. They lost a lot of rotation players, and I still think it's smoke and mirrors. <laughs> I just, yeah. I don't know. People are gonna be like, "You, I'm doing it. I'm not doing it this year. I'm just not doing it. Let's just not even talk about the Heat. The Sixers aren't there. Uh, Harden's gonna be out. Somebody else has got to come in. If Harden's there, it's still not enough. So I thought Porzingis put the Celtics fractionally better than the Bucks. Yep. And then when the Bucks added Lillard, I know it's a huge boost offensively, but I thought they became fractionally better than the Celtics. This Drew Holiday trade to the Celtics, I think, makes them one of the greatest defensive teams ever assembled. And I and I I know I like to use superlatives. I think that's one of the best defensive teams ever assembled. Okay. Now, the other day when we spoke, you said they were maybe the greatest, and that's where I'm not going to go. Well, they got to do it. They got to do yeah. it. They, you gotta win a title. On, on paper, you have nothing but good defenders in your starting lineup. Nothing. That's it. And and Porzingis and Horford coming off the bench. Yeah, and Porzingis being or Derek White, depending on Derek how they. Yeah, yeah, or Derek White. Um, I do think though, by adding Drew Holiday, and and finally, I've heard people say it over the last few days. Okay, they've acknowledged the fact that he has been a terrible decision maker over the last couple of years in the playoffs. Okay, I think so. I don't – I'm hoping it helps. But the, the question is why. Have the ball. Well, I think it's – well, and I, I heard was it made sense. It's because when Middleton wasn't Middleton, that's, that's he the had question. to do more than 
he's used to doing, right? But my deal is when he Way was more. in New Orleans, he had the ball in his hands all the time, and I don't ever remember him being a poor decision maker. But did you know this? Did you know what his assist to turnover ratio is in the playoffs for his career? It's good, three isn't to, it? Three to I one. Know. I heard it. I just don't know how. Because when I watched him last season, it was yeah. maddening. And Dude, so I think the Celtics best play in the history of the Milwaukee Bucks franchise that people say. The lob to Giannis in game five against Phoenix with 18 seconds left when they're winning the game. It was an awful decision. Terrible. You're lucky the biggest freak of nature in history was on the receiving end of that lob. Let's put it that way. You're yep. lucky that wasn't any mere mortal and it was Giannis. Yep. Uh, the Celtics are obviously banking on – you know, the Drew Holiday we're about to get, we're going to ask much less of him offensively uh, and just ask him to be himself and do his thing defensively. Um, I I think we're going to see a lot of Celtics basketball with all four guards, and I consider Tatum a guard, a wing, whatever you call him, whatever you want. I think we're going to see a lot of lineups where it's Derek White, Holiday, Brown, and Tatum on the floor together. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot. And then they dare, the, they dare the other team to play bully ball against Tatum in the post or whatever. Um, Derek White is a very freaking good defender. Drew Holiday, we know what he is, notwithstanding the fact that he got roasted by Jimmy Butler. I blame Budenholzer a little bit for that because uh, unless he was just taking the lead from Holiday, they – why didn't you just run the run him off the ball? I, I don't understand why you don't. I don't understand the NBA why you don't run Jimmy Butler off the ball and say, "Go ahead, Max Struess and Bam Adebayo and you know Gabe Vincent win the whole beat us in a series with those guys." It's no different than when you hear coaches say things like, "They're up three, ten seconds left, and we're just going to guard." Yeah, no, just you go foul. grab the guy, grab just him. Foul. Like, foul. Just stop. how many times you got to see that ball go in? I don't, you know, it's no different. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I, so I think the Celtics would be my pick out of the East, as much as it pains me to say that. Um, out of the Celtics, in your opinion, how do they match up with a healthy Denver team? Are they are they a lot better? Or are they? I think they're. I think they're a lot better than a healthy Denver team. Okay. Because the Denver team this year is significantly different than the Denver team last year. The that Bruce Brown guy who I used to bash all the time. He matters. He matters. Yeah, he, he's gone. I mean, I, you know, I say that. Here's the problem with Denver, and we said it last year. They weren't the deepest team around. Right. When you get to their bench, you get to Christian Brown or Brown or however you want to say his name. Yeah. Reggie Jackson, when's the last time you saw him contribute to any basketball team in the NBA, right? right. Used to be a very good backup point guard. Right. Uh, Justin Holiday can only catch and shoot and guard no one. Yeah. I don't know who Peyton Watson is. Zeke yeah. Naji is a completely unproven power forward rim runner guy. Hunter Tyson, never heard of him. Julian Strother, never heard of him. Jalen Pickett, never heard of him. DeAndre Jordan is basically a coach. Gollin Gillespie, never heard never heard of any of these dudes. So basically, your bench uh, is Christian Braun, Reggie Jackson, Justin Holiday, and Zeke yeah. Najee. My question to you is – it's not really a question, actually. I think Boston, the lineup that we're talking about throwing out there, is so long, athletic, and and – and cares about guarding that they would be the one team that could give Jokic a problem. I mean, look, Jokic is going to be Jokic regardless, but I'm saying like from a standpoint of passing lanes, aren't just going to be open, right? Yeah. Um, hit, closeouts are different. They can double and recover. And like, they can, they, they can do some things to make him have to make decisions under five seconds, as opposed to under 10 seconds. Right. Yeah. I think, that stuff matters. So I'm I'm interested. Like Porzingis can't guard Jokic. I got that. But like when Horford might do a better job against Jokic, honestly, because it's just about keeping his job. People don't understand how big Nikola Jokic is. He's, I think he's third third biggest player in the NBA. Well, think um, about who, who who the best defender against Embiid has been for the last several years. It's Horford. Yeah. For sure. You know, so yeah. For some reason he's got special rules where he can put his hands on whoever he wants and refs don't call it. And that he right. every year he does it to Giannis. So right. Uh, who's the best player in the world right now? One word answer, all things Jokic. considered. Jokic. Agreed, not even close. Um, who's the second best player? Giannis. Third is where things get a little muddy, huh? Third is um, Kevin Durant. Embiid, Embiid, Durant. Kevin Durant. Still Again, Kevin Durant. Durant. You say Kevin Durant, and we're not even sure he's the alpha on his team. Bro, he's the alpha. Okay. I mean, they're, they're sure? all alpha. 
they're all alphas. Devin Booker is definitely an alpha. They can have more. That's what I'm saying. But he is uh, – when you go look back at what he did last year when he got to Phoenix and how many games he lost, which was like two, um, you know, I, I think – if let's just say this, if Jokic isn't on Denver, isn't Phoenix in the finals last year? If Jokic is not on Denver's team, yeah, yeah, right. So I'm saying so, like Jokic is the reason why Phoenix didn't go to the finals. Yeah, that's fair. Well, let me ask you this: um, Is it a two horse race in the East? Is there yeah. any conceivable way, barring an injury to Giannis and an injury to Jason Tatum? Is there any conceivable way, if relatively healthy, it's not Boston and Milwaukee? No. Has to be. We, we, we would have said something similar to that last year. You know that, right? Yeah, because we we refuse to talk about Miami. We refuse yeah. to talk about them, dude. I just, what about in the I'm West? I'm not going to naysay them, though. I'm not going to say anything against them. I just I'm not either. Talk about them. I just I just can't. I gotta I'm going to treat them like Isaiah Thomas. I'm just not going to acknowledge them because I am tired of sounding like an idiot and a non-believer and a hater. And I'm not really a hater yes. unless yes. you're talking about Dylan Brooks, um, <laughs> you know, or CJ McCollum, who we like to go to war with. By the way, uh, the two best players that have ever played. Everybody's like, well, Damian Lillard can't win the big one. Damian Lillard has no playoff success. Blah blah blah. But I think they did go to a conference finals. But like the two best players he's ever played with in his entire life. Uh, or unless he played with somebody better at Weaver State, which I'm not familiar with, CJ McCollum and LaMarcus Aldridge. Period. That's it. Period. That's it. And it's not even There's close. no one else in the conversation. No. You can't even start to name a third. I mean, honest to God, Jeremy Grant might be the third best player he's ever played against. Well, played or Anthony Simons. Or Anthony you know, Simons. For that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Or Nurkic. I mean, I don't know. I mean, think about that. So, again, it's a team sport. Uh, I think – we're going to unleash an entirely new level of Damian Lillard here in uh, in Milwaukee. And while he might not put up as many shots, I think he's going to be crazy, crazy uh, efficient. I think his assist numbers are going to be up. I think Giannis might have a career high in assists because what's going to happen on that pick and roll is Giannis is going to receive it at the elbow and you can't leave Lillard. And now you've got shooters all over the place. I just think I think it could be special. I think Giannis's assist numbers and rebound numbers are going to go way, way, way up. And I do think his scoring is probably going to go down. A lot of people are like, oh, this is going to unlock, you know, crazy Giannis where he's going to score these many, this many points because they can't defend him the pick and roll. Giannis makes the right decision a lot. And if he's got the ball going downhill and a double comes on that, on that roll to the rim, um, unless he's already so deep where he can just get fouled or dunk it, he's, he sees it, man. He really sees the floor well. And he's going to have Lopez, Connaughton, Middleton, and Lillard and Beasley ready just like this question for you uh because you've watched him more than anybody i know is middleton an elite open shooter jonathan it's been so long since i've seen a healthy middleton it's hard to say and people are going to say well, what's health got to do with shooting it's got a lot to do with shooting because a you can't get in the rhythm he hasn't played enough consecutive games he's not in shape so he's more fatigued his if his knee is fucked up which it was i said uh, open though Open shooter is he? An yeah, uh, I think uh, Middleton is a forty percent uh, three point shooter. If he is, uh, if he is, yeah, if he's getting clean looks. I mean, generally speaking, obviously, if he's open, he's probably a sixty percent free throw sh- uh, three point shooter. But um, you know, he shot thirty one percent last year. It's freaking terrible. But he's thirty eight point eight on his career, even considering that thirty one percent. So if you okay. go back to the last time he was healthy, and I've got him. Oh, hold on, sorry, I've got him pulled up right here, Jonathan. Um, his three point percentage. God damn, he's been in the league that long. God. Uh, 41, 40, 39.6, 43, 36, 38, 41.5, 41.4. And that's when he got hurt and it dropped off to 37. And then last year, 31. I, if I was a gambling man, I would say last year's low three point shooting was an anomaly. And I think he's going to bounce back in the 38 to 40 range. That's my personal opinion. If he does, because I'm kind of on this side of, I'm not sure he's ever going to be the offensive creator that he was again. No, he's not. Okay. And as long as he can be an elite open shooter, then he matters. Then he matters, you know? Um, So we'll see. See Look at Lillard, Jonathan. Lillard's three-point percentage, keeping in mind he's taking crazy shit, right? Stupid shots. He's going to take a lot, getting a lot more clean looks with Giannis on the floor and just a much better supporting cast. Uh, Even when he was on all those dog teams where he was having to take all the shots, he's a career 37. 
I'd be shocked if Lillard wasn't also in the 38 to 40 range. Yeah. You know? He's, he is yeah. a, an incredible shooter with range. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Celtics and Bucks in the East, Suns and Nuggets in the West, and then everybody else. Is that the big four? Lakers. Lakers, man. I'm not going to be shocked this year. Yeah. I don't know why. I think they've added some pieces that matter. Um, and again, the only reason why I would say no is because Anthony Davis tends to not want to play basketball all the time. Yeah. So, well, but we'll see. But all right, that's it. That's it. We just wanted to talk about those trades in the offseason going back to June 23rd. We'll be uh, focusing a lot more on the season. That's, uh, Jonathan, we're less than, I mean, we're like three weeks away, something like that. Yeah. So we're close. We've got to start talking about our top league pass teams. We've got to try to pick our. Uh, make some of our picks to bet most improved teams and some of the FanDuel bets on um, futures that we like to do. So we'll talk through a lot more of the coming up NBA. So we call this NBA past and present. We're going to focus a lot more on the present and maybe even the future uh, in upcoming episodes. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. Peace. Peace.